how to speak fast British English. There are three things that you've got to do. Hey everyone, Benjamin here. A lot of people loved the last pronunciation video, so let's go even deeper into this topic today. The three things that we are going to look at in this video are embracing the contractions, focusing on the important words and ignoring the unimportant words, and practicing proper word stress. Embracing the contractions, the first topic, is key. Let's look at some examples. I could say, I have really got to leave, but that sounds quite robotic. Or I could say, I've really got to leave, I've really got to leave, and that sounds so much smoother and better and more natural. What about, I have had a lovely day, I've had a lovely day. I've had a lovely day. This is something we will look at later on in this class video, but after the contraction I've had, the a uh, is also connected at the end of the word. I've had a, I've had a, it becomes one, much more natural. Practice that. And we could say, what has happened? What's happened? What's happened? Good. There are many other contractions that we can practice, like should have, should've, could have, could've, might have, might've, etc. So many, we can focus on some more in the next video, but practice these and incorporate them in your speaking. Now, focusing on the important words and ignoring the unimportant words. Benjamin, what are you talking about? Well, let me elaborate a little bit. Words like and, for and to, to give you some examples, are words that we don't really stress or focus on when speaking. They disappear, they are eaten up within our speech. I could say, this is really something I want to do. Want to do. That would be a very normal and more robotic way of speaking. But if I try to eat up those unimportant words and speak naturally, this is really something I want to do. This is really something I want to do. So instead of saying want to do, I said want to do. So the T at the end of want and the T-O for to were all merged together. This is really something I want to do. Or she looks about 50 or so. She looks about 50 or so. That one, I was connecting the word looks and about together, kind of uh, combining them to make my speech quicker and more natural. She looks about 50 or so, and I wasn't really stressing the whole word about. She looks about, she looks about 50 or so. This one, this third one is a good example. Let's go for it. I have got a couple of things to ask you. Would be, I've got a couple of things to ask you. Let's break that down. I've got a, I've got a couple of things to ask you. I've got a couple of things to ask you. So the two has been eliminated or reduced a lot. I've got a couple of things to ask you. And last one, this one has a question tag at the end. So remember the intonation has to go up. It is a bit dark, isn't it? Turns into, it's a bit dark, isn't it? It's a bit dark, isn't it? So the T has disappeared and the beginning, it's a, has become isa. It's a bit dark, isn't it? One more time. It's a bit dark, isn't it? Very good. Try that. Create some different sentences, but keep practicing that beautiful pronunciation. Last but not least, practice proper word stress. For two syllable word nouns and adjectives, the stress is on the first syllable. For example, apple, table, happy. For words which can be used as nouns and verbs, the noun has the stress on the first syllable. You are the suspect. The verb has the stress on the second syllable. I suspect you. Other words that you can use in this are import, insult, etc. Compound nouns, fairly equally balanced, but slightly more stress in the first part of the word, like hairbrush and football. Now let's look at a little activity, a little a demonstration we can do to think about the word stress, because this is a huge part of the English language. However, in other languages, this is not something that happens. If we think about the model verb can, 
When can is used in positive, we glide over the word and we don't really stress it. And it is hardly pronounced. An example sentence could be, they can come on Friday. I could stress come or Friday, depending on the importance or the meaning. If I'm stressing Friday, that might mean that we discussed about Thursday. Or if I stress the word come, that might mean there was a debate about whether they could come or not. But can, we just glide over it. They can come, or they can come on Friday. On the other hand, when we use the negative form can't, and focus on my pronunciation can't, we emphasize that to emphasize that the sentence is negative. So the same sentence would be, they can't come on Friday. They can't come on Friday. But I could also stress other words like Friday. They can't come on Friday. So let's recap on some words that you can stress or should stress and shouldn't stress. Stress words are considered content words, such as nouns like kitchen and Peter and John. Most main verbs like visit, plan, travel. Adjectives like exciting, exhilarating and boring. Adverbs like rarely, sometimes and carefully. Negatives, including negative helping words like no, none, nothing, and nowhere. There is nothing we can do about it. There is nowhere to go. There is no such thing. And words expressing quantities like a lot of, few, and many. We have a lot of time left. There are not many eggs left. And non-stressed words are considered function words such as determiners like the, a, some and a few, auxiliary verbs like do, am, are, can, prepositions like in, on, next to, opposite, conjunctions like but, while and as, pronouns like they, she and us, and verbs like have and be even when used as main verbs. So there you have it. This is your way to speaking British English faster and even better and smoother and more fluent than ever before. Take these tips, incorporate them and watch the magic happen. Let me know what you think in the comments section and I'm please, if you like this video, subscribe, give a thumbs up and a comment just to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching everybody and I wish you a lovely rest of the day wherever you are. Thanks for watching and bye for now.